Yes, you can. Linux inside of Windows on a Mac. I know, sounds crazy. Why would you do that? I'll cover why, I'll cover what's not gonna work, and I'll give you some workarounds. Let's go. First things first, running Windows on a Mac. And you've seen my videos before on this topic. I have a couple of tutorials here, but in case you're new, I use a program called Parallels. So on my Apple Silicon machine, I've created a Windows 11 machine. It's Windows for ARM, which is getting a lot of attention lately. So the development on it has really skyrocketed lately. I can run Visual Studio, I can run VS Code. I, I can run a ton of programs that are all native now in ARM. But to get Linux running inside Windows, there's a technology called WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. To get that running, open up PowerShell and just type in WSL dash dash install. Enter new Unix username, Alex, password, and boom. I'm already inside my Linux instance. Now I also have this from the dropdown immediately available, Ubuntu right there. LS, there we go. This will be everything you need that will run a virtual Linux machine inside your Windows machine on a Mac. But, but, there's a couple of issues here. There are currently two versions of WSL. I shouldn't say currently. There have been two versions, WSL 1 and WSL 2. Very different technologies. They both allow you to run Linux on Windows. WSL 1 used an emulation layer where there was translation going on from Linux commands to Windows commands and vice versa. It worked well, but WSL 2 took that to the next level. It's actually running a tiny little instance of a virtual machine in Windows that runs Linux inside of that. Uh, it's better in many ways, and it's not as good in some ways. For example, WSL1 had shorter startup time. There was no need for booting up an extra virtual machine. It's not super noticeable, but it's there. WSL2 is a full Linux kernel, which means more Linux applications will run on it without modifications. And when it comes to the file system and accessing the file system, WSL2 is a little bit faster depending on what kind of files you're opening. If you're opening many files, then it is. Now, as far as Windows for ARM versus Windows X64, WSL is implemented across both of those, and I run Windows for ARM on my Mac. I also run Windows for ARM on a dedicated ARM machine, and that one's running WSL2. Here, we're running WSL1 because WSL2 cannot work. Why? Why can't it work? And why would you want it to work? What's the point of doing any of this anyway? I hear you typing in the comments right now. Alex, what is your problem? You have a virtualization environment on a Mac. Just create a Linux machine. And I did do that. So here's my control center for parallels. I have Windows here. I can modify the hardware. I was just modifying the network because I'm about to show you something there. You can have different kinds of networks. Host only, shared, default adapter, Wi-Fi. I selected shared for a specific reason. I'm going to show you why in a moment. And here's my Ubuntu for ARM64. So yeah, I created a new virtual machine that's Ubuntu, and it is pronounced Ubuntu, uh, not Ubuntu or Ubuntu or Ubuntu. Uh, fight me in the comments about it. It's Ubuntu. Here I have a network and it's shared network as well. My machine is sleeping right now. Let's wake it up. There we go. I got Ubuntu running as a virtual machine as well. And I can do everything that I need to do on a Linux machine because this is a Linux machine. There is no extra virtualization layer and there is no translation to Windows here. So if I can do that, why would I use WSL? at all. Well, there's use cases for WSL, very good use cases. That's why it exists. If you have only a Windows machine, if you don't want to create a separate partition, use WSL. And when you do that, you're able to run and share all your Windows resources. From your Linux machine, you have direct access to all your Windows files and projects. For example, you can use VS Code running on Windows to edit your files in Linux. I have VS Code installed on this Windows machine. So let's say I am mkdir code directory and then go in there, I can say code dot and this pops open VS Code. It's the Windows version of VS Code. I didn't need to install any other VS Code and it's pointing at Ubuntu right there. It's telling me that's that's where it is. Now if I was running a separate instance, a virtual machine that's Ubuntu separately, I would need to reinstall my entire tool chain just for that machine. And let's face it, there are some tools that are available in Windows that are simply not available in Linux. One notable example is SQL Server Management Studio. Yeah, I realize the irony that SQL Server itself is an x86 application and won't run for um, Windows on ARM. But SQL Server Management Studio, even though it's an x64 application, does run on Windows for ARM. Hey, jumping in here for a minute. I hate spending hours decluttering my Mac, don't you? If so, check out Clean My Mac X, who were kind enough to sponsor the segment of the video. After downloading and installing the trial from the App Store, I immediately found 10 gigabytes of junk and removed it using Clean My Mac X. And digging a bit further, I discovered a bunch of automated tools that do cleanup tasks that would take me so long that most of the time I just resolved to being lazy 
easy and not doing them at all. Now I just click and done. No wonder the software has 4.6 average rating on the App Store with almost 10,000 reviews right now. Makes sense. Clean My Mac X is the ultimate Mac maintenance app, and it packs in a few of the common tools that you'd use into one. And I like the smart scan feature, which combines cleanup, malware removal, and speed up in a single click. It takes only about two minutes to run. And the menu app gives you a dashboard to monitor everything from battery health to disk space and even network speed. The uninstaller tool deletes apps without a trace and resets those that crash. While Space Lens, one of my favorites, helps you find large forgotten files. So start going clutter free. Use my link in the description to download a free seven day trial and get a 20% discount. Clean up your Mac to date with Clean My Mac X. Now I did mention that this is running WSL 1. You can actually look at your instances and you can see that Ubuntu is running under version one of WSL. Unfortunately, you can't run version two on a virtualized machine. Why is that? Why? Well, here's the problem. The problem is Apple Silicon's nested virtualization. It doesn't allow us to virtualize inside a virtual machine. So you can run WSL 1 because that one is not creating a virtual machine. It's using a translation, but you can't run WSL 2 because that one needs a virtual machine to run and it's using nested virtualization, which is not allowed on Apple Silicon. There has been product feedback submitted to Apple for this. It's a feature request. Don't know if they're going to implement it or when they're going to implement it or if they're going to implement it, but I'll leave a link down below. And the more of us go requested, the better. There's already been some community posts about this for a while. To use WSL2 for running Docker desktop, create other VMs for testing development, BlueStack simulator inside of Windows on ARM, VM and Parallels desktop for Macs, not only Parallels, but a Fusion UTM, nothing's going to work for this because nested virtualization is required, which is not supported on Apple Silicon, unfortunately, right now. But in a WSL presentation from the recent build event, Q&A addresses the question of running WSL2 and its new features on ARM. But they're talking about Windows for ARM and it works well on that, but it's not going to work on Apple Silicon here. Please, please get nested virtualization done so we can keep showing our Apple machines off as the dev solution. Thanks for listening. I don't know if begging will help, especially in this forum, but this product feedback link might help. So after this video, go click on that and fill out this form and ask for nested virtualization in Apple Silicon, especially if you need to do that kind of work. So here's a perfect example of that. I'm about to buy a new Apple M3 MacBook Pro, but part of my job is building virtual machine introspection tools. This person is using VMware Fusion and it's not working there either, of course. I have similar concerns. I filed feedbacks to Apple via product feedback on adding nested virtualization in the virtualization and hypervisor frameworks. And Parallels on their site has an article about this saying this feature is currently not supported in Parallels desktop with Apple Silicon. Please consider providing your support for nested virtualization feature by voting on an Apple discussion forum in this thread. And I'll link to this thread down below as well so you can check that out. Now for now, here's a little trick that I use when I need to run full Linux, full blown Linux and share everything with my Mac or Windows or both. On my host machine, I go to my folder where I keep my code, it's called code. And then I created a folder called VM share. Let's just drop a project in there called Phi data. And then on my Linux machine, I have a mapped folder called VM share and I can access it right there. There's my requirements. I'll pop this open VS code on my host machine and you'll see requirements right there. If I change something here, let's say, I don't know, version 4.11.0 to 4.11.1. There it is, 4.11.1. If I change it back on my Mac, it says the file has changed on disk reload. You get the idea. Shared folder, nothing new. Same thing on Windows. I have my Mac files, which is mapped and there's VM share easily accessible. There's my VS code instance and I can access this project right here just like that. Yes, trust the authors and we're good to go. We got a bunch of upgrade notices. Great. Same thing here. You can just update to your heart's content. I don't know if that version exists, but if we check VS Code in the host now, it should be .3. Now to set up file sharing in Parallels, go to your virtual machine settings, options, sharing, and then you can either share everything, which I have turned off. I have certain folders that I want to share, and there's my VM share folder that I'm reading and writing to. You can change the permissions of whether you want to read or write or both. And of course, I have the same thing on my Ubuntu under options, sharing, and there's VM share right there. Sharing files is one thing. Sharing network is another thing. IP config, that's the IP address of my Windows machine. And my IP address of my Linux machine is 10.211.55.11. I can ping that and there we go. So I can connect services now between my Windows machine and my virtual Linux also if I need to. So you have options. If you have a Mac and then you have dedicated Windows and a dedicated Linux machine on the same network, 
good. You're good to go. The only problem you have is switching keyboards and got to get a nice KVM, which I haven't tried lately. If you have any KVM ideas, let me know in the comments or you can just remote into those machines or SSH into them. That's that also works. Another extreme option is what I showed you in the beginning. Mac, Windows inside of a Mac, Linux inside of Windows under Dassel. And for certain workflows, that's going to work just fine, even in Apple Silicon, unless you need WSL2, in which case you probably just want to create another virtual machine that's just a dedicated Linux virtual machine on your Mac host. It's going to take a little bit more resources. But if you're doing all that, you probably already have a MacBook Pro with more than 16 gigabytes, hopefully 32 or more of RAM. All right, that was a bit of a ranty one, huh? Well, let me know if you like this style of video. Give me a thumbs up down below. And for a recent video where I take you through the installation of Windows on a Mac in two different ways, one using Bootcamp and one using Parallels, uh, watch this video right over here. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.